Hello, bandits. Courtesy of the folks at Cosmic Forces, today I'm taking a look over the nostalgia-driven Fright Fest, which is Goosebumps Dead of Night. This title will pull on the heartstrings of many of us who grew up in the 90s and is based around R.L. Stein's illustrious series of children's books. It's one which, as a huge fan of the series as a child, I was really looking forward to spending time with. Unfortunately, though, it's one which has heavily missed the mark for me, with lacklustre visuals and gameplay which hasn't excited or engaged. You'll play as Twist, looking to survive the trials of Slappy the Ventriloquist Dummy, sent him back into the books where he belongs. There are a number of different areas, missions and monsters which will be recognisable for fans of the series, as well as simple puzzles and stealth mechanics used throughout. You'll not be able to fight back with the monsters you find along the way, but rather look to run, hide, avoid, or otherwise distract them to get past. From a parent's point of view, this is definitely a bit of a weird one. According to the Xbox Store, Goosebumps Dead of Night is rated by Peggy at 7 and above, and by the ESRB as Everybody 10+. After reviewing the content into the title, I had a further look into this, as I believed that 7 was quite low for the content, and I saw that the Peggy site itself lists the title as a 12+. I definitely agree that this one would not be suitable for those under the age of at least 10 and possibly a little older. I myself find a number of elements in the title quite scary and a larger number just unnerving. There are a number of low level horrors in here with garden gnomes, sentient tree creatures and quite a few more. There are however some much more worrying elements in the title. When captured by ghouls, animations and sounds will likely terrify smaller children. In addition, you can be stung to death by bees, eaten by any number of creatures, and more. For me, it really reached a peak early on while being stalked around a house by a clown who finds you when you're in the dark and who is literally called murder. With the content in the title, in my opinion, it's one which would even be worried to give to children at 10 or 12. The Pixel Bandit's rating for Goosebumps Dead of Night is surprisingly a solid no. And with that stacked up, onto the rundown. Visuals. Lacking. It's a shame to see this these days, but visuals in the title feel quite last gen. As well as this lacklustre performance in terms of graphics, there are also some other issues here, such as the gargantuan stamina bar whenever you need to run, as well as the hidden icon when taking advantage of stealth elements within the game. Audio good. The audio within the title is well executed, and voice acting works well as you make your way through various stages. Voices are creepy where they should be creepy, and in general, things here are pretty decent. Narrative good. There is, as you would really expect from a literary series, a halfway decent narrative which runs through this one, narrated by the Stein writer and including many nods and references which will be instantly recognisable to fans of the books. Replay lacking. In honesty, there is just not enough in this one to pull me back in, and even playing through once has been a bit of a chore. More in terms of collectibles would have been nice here as well as much trickier puzzle mechanics. Overall, the Pixel Bandit's slappy level for Goosebumps Dead of Night is, unfortunately, give it a miss. To be honest, it's just not a title I've enjoyed, so I guess it turns out that I was the monster all along. This one is going to be a tough sell for adults as it's just too easy in terms of puzzles. It includes very basic mechanics and overall simply feels very lightweight. If it wasn't for the genuinely scary death animations and creatures within the title, it would be one I'd say is about the right level for 6 to 8 year olds, maybe up to 10. However, with Murder the Clown being stung to death by bees included, as well as many other frights, especially at the current price point, sadly it's just not one I can recommend for anybody. And that's all I've got for you today. Don't forget to join the conversation over on Facebook and Twitter, and let me know your thoughts on this one as well. As ever, more reviews, streams, and absolute nonsense coming your way very soon, so don't wander too far.